Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. The also dominant chord can be kind of difficult to deal with, but there are a few good tricks or hacks that you can use if you want to play these chords. In this video, I'm going to go over how you can expand your also dominant chord vocabulary by using other chord voicings that you already know as also dominant voicings. Now this way of thinking and this way of using one chord voicing as several different chords is something that's really useful and for me it really helped me open up and expand my vocabulary both in terms of comping and chord soloing. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo or check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. I'm going to cover three types of chord voicings that you can use as also dominant chords. I'm first going to talk about what kind of extensions and alterations they're going to give you. And then I'm also going to give you some examples of how they sound in the context of a 2-5-1 in the key of C major. For each of the examples, I'm going to give you one that's sort of pretty straightforward that you maybe already have heard before. And then I'm also going to just use this idea and this way of thinking to give you some other great examples that you might not have thought about otherwise. You probably already know a 2-5-1 with an alter dominant like this. So if I look at the G7 alter in this case, then that's this voicing. And if I take away the G, the bass note, then I just have this voicing on top. And that's an F half diminished voicing. So that means that if I want to play a G7 alter, I can actually use an F half diminished as a rootless uh, voicing. Really with the F half diminished here, we have the root. So the F is the flat seven, the A flat is a flat nine. Then we have the flat five, that's the third of the G7. And the E flat is the flat 13. So we have a G7 with a flat 9 and a flat 13. And that can give us this set of chords. And if I start to invert this, so instead of just thinking about this single F half diminished, I can of course invert that into other voicings, just using other drop 2 voicings. And that can give me something like this. And I can of course also use the F half diminished voicing without using a drop 2 voicing and that gives me something like this. In this example you can look at the G7 altered voicing as being actually two different chords. You can look at it still as being related to the F half diminished, so it's like an F half diminished with an 11 instead of the third. You can also look at it as being a B major 7 flat 5. So against the G root we have the 7th, the 3rd, the flat 13 and the sharp 9. And of course we have already this example, but another example where you're really thinking about the B major 7 flat 5 would be this. So here I'm really using a root position B major 7 flat 5 or something. Another example could be this. So here I'm first playing an F major 7 voicing for the D minor 7 chord, so that's this one. It's basically a D minor 7 with a 9. Then this inversion of a B major 7 flat 5. And then I'm resolving that to this basic C major 7 inversion that's a little bit tricky to play. Another great way to come up with some chord voicings is to not think about the G7 at all and really just think about the tritone substitution. So in this case, instead of G7, I'm just going to try to find some voicings for a D flat 7. And that could be something like this. So here I'm using this F major triad with an added G for the D minor 7. That's giving me a D minor 11. And then on the G7, I'm playing this and that's a basic D flat 7 voicing really. Uh, but against the G root, we have the 7, 3rd, flat 5, and flat 9. So that's a nice set of colors for an also voicing. And then I'm resolving to this C major 7. And we can take that even further and then just make some small adjustments to our D flat voicing. And then you might get something like this. So here I'm starting with the D minor 7 with an 11 and a 9. Then I'm moving to not a D flat 7 but a D flat 13 voicing. But against the G7, that's of course gonna be so the third, seventh, sharp nine, flat five. And then resolving that to the C major seven with a nine. 
by thinking of your F half diminished or D flat seven voicings as G seven also calls, then you can really open up for a lot of different options using inversions and different ways of playing these chords. If you want to explore more on different types of voicings or this way of thinking to use one type of chord for different types of situations, then check out the videos in this playlist. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. These are the kind of videos that I publish here every week. And of course, if you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.